Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Devon County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. Enjoy. Library Connections number 81. This is the Friday, December 17th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. And I can't believe today is December 17th, which means, of course, that next Friday is Christmas Eve, followed by Christmas Day on Saturday, and wham, bam, we'll be into January 2022 before we know it. Maybe it's a vintage thing. I do definitely have both feet firmly planted in middle age, but it seems like November just flew right by. Ah, well, I'm with Library Connections. Kicking things off as usual, with the top five fiction bestsellers for this week from the New York Times. At number one, Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman. A debut collection of poems on identity and history by the presidential inaugural poet who wrote The Hill We Climb. At number two, The Judge's List by John Grisham the second book in the Whistler series. Investigator Lacey Stoltz goes after a serial killer and closes in on a sitting judge. At number three, go tell the bees that I am gone. And I have to digress just a moment to say what a neat title. I know it has a historical reference, but how many books have you ever read that are called Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone? Unless you've read this one, I'm guessing the answer is none. But of course, I'm digressing. Go Tell the Bees That I Am Gone is the new novel by Diana Gabaldon. It's the ninth book in the Outlander series, and by the way, the second to last book. So having said that, let me tell you a little about it. As the Revolutionary War moves closer to Fraser's Ridge, Claire and Jamie reunite with their daughter and her family. At number four, The Lincoln Highway by Amor Tolls. Two friends who escaped from a juvenile work farm take Emmett Watson on an unexpected journey to New York City in 1954. And at number five, Wish You Were Here by Jody Picoult. Diana O'Toole reevaluates her seemingly perfect life when a pandemic disrupts her vacation in the Galapagos Islands. Moving on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers for this week. At number one, The 1619 Project, edited by Nicole Hannah Jones, Caitlin Roper, Elena Silverman, and Jake Silverstein. Viewing America's entanglement with slavery and its legacy in essays adapted and expanded from the New York Times Magazine. At number two, All American Christmas by Rachel Campus Duffy and Sean Duffy. A collection of holiday memories from members of the staff of Fox News. At number three, the Storyteller by Dave Grohl, a memoir by the musician known for his work with Foo Fighters and Nirvana. At number four, Will by Will Smith with Mark Manson, the actor, producer, and musician tells his life story and relays lessons he learned along the way. And at number five, the Lyrics, 1956 to the Present by Paul McCartney. A two-volume celebration of 154 songs with handwritten texts, paintings, and photographs from the songwriter's archives. Our first recommended read for this week is a really cool nonfiction book. It's called Tastemakers, Seven Immigrant Women who Revolutionized Food in America, written by Mayuk Sen. 
let me tell you a little about the book. America's modern culinary history is told through the lives of seven pathbreaking chefs and food writers. Question, who is really behind America's appetite for foods from around the globe? The answer in part is found in this biography. This group bio from an eclectic new voice in food writing honors seven extraordinary women, all immigrants, who left an indelible mark on the way Americans eat today. Tastemakers stretches from World War II to the present with absorbing and deeply researched portraits of figures including Mexican-born Elena Zaleta, a blind chef, Marcella Hazan, the deity of Italian cuisine, and Norma Shirley, a champion of Jamaican dishes. In imaginative, lively prose, Mayuka Sen, a queer brown child of immigrants, reconstructs the lives of these women in vivid and empathic detail. Daring to ask why some were famous in their own time, but not in ours, and why others shine even more brightly today. Weaving together histories of food, immigration, and gender, tastemakers will challenge the way readers look at what's on their plate and the women whose labor, overlooked for so long, makes those meals possible. So if you like food and history, check out Tastemakers. Moving on to our second recommended read for this week, and this too is a cool nonfiction title. It's called Under Jerusalem, by Andrew Lawler, and it focuses on, as the subtitle indicates, the buried history of the world's most contested city. So yes, the book's on archeology. span In this sweeping account, journalist Lawler explores the complicated history of archeological digs in Jerusalem. Ranging from imperialistic expeditions in the 19th century when explorers competed in a race to stake a claim to Jerusalem's past, to allegations that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government used archaeology as a legitimizer for the state. Lawler's colorful narrative includes aristocrats, scientists, charlatans, and clerics who search for the authentic place of Jesus' death and resurrection, sought to uncover the remains of the ancient city of David, and tried to find the Ark of the Covenant, among other archaeological treasures. He vividly describes early explorers navigating mud and sewage-laden tunnels to recover the biblical secrets locked beneath the holy city and he incisively untangles the contentious geopolitical dimensions of ancient history as modern-day Israelis and Palestinians use archaeological analysis to bolster their political views and territorial claims. Richly detailed, sensitively argued, and entertainingly written, this immersive history cast Jerusalem in a new light and reveals the tensions that meet at the intersection of science, politics, religion, and history. This fascinating even-handed chronicle is a treasure. And that's the Starred Publishers Weekly Review. Our first audiobook recommendation for this week is a really insightful and cool nonfiction yarn. It's called The Secret of Life. Rosalind Franklin, James Watson, Francis Crick, and The Discovery of DNA's Double Helix. The book is written by Howard Markell and narrated by Donald Corrin. Many listeners of this audiobook, especially women, 
will feel growing indignation as it unfolds. Narrator Donald Corrin's voice possesses the quiet certainty of an investigator who searched the record fully, weighted all the facts, and uncovered a hive of nasty crimes, deceit, slander, sexism, and anti-Semitism. The men involved, most famously James Watson, have already told the story of how in 1953, he and Francis Crick discovered the structure of DNA. Their breakthrough, however, relied on crucial laboratory results stolen from X-ray crystallographer Rosalind Franklin in what author Howard Markell calls, quote, one of the most egregious ripoffs in the history of science. Expertly narrated with subtle grace by Corin, refreshingly clear and easy to follow, here's a true crime story as compelling as any who done it. And that's the audio file review. Our second audiobook recommendation, and for fiction fans, rejoice, I'm finally picking a fiction title this week. This is called The Highland Witch, a novel by Susan Fletcher. The audio is read by Rosalind Landor. White Bread Award winner Fletcher brings a stunning retelling of the 1692 Glencoe Massacre in which 38 members of Clan MacDonald were killed by the King's soldiers in the Scottish Highlands. Coreg, an accused witch, relates her story to Charles Leslie, an Irish Jacobite seeking evidence against the King. Jailed and waiting to be burned, Coreg agrees to tell Charles what he wants to know, but he must listen to her whole tale. And what a tale it is. Luminous prose transports the listener to Coreg's side as she searches for a home, finds joy in the little wonders of life, and braves the brutality of those who don't understand her. Award-winning narrator Rosalind Landor is convincing in her vocal choices handling strong accents and remarkable male voices and employing a perfect timbre for the delicate Coreg. Verdict. This evocative tale will linger long after the last words are spoken. It will appeal to fans of historical fiction and those who enjoy works by Diana Gabaldon and Philippa Gregory. Coreg's story and the brutality suffered by women throughout the British Isles needs to be retold in each generation. And that is from the Starred Library Journal Review. Moving on to our streaming recommendations, our first recommendation is a new Amazon Prime movie. It's called Being the Ricardos. It's directed by Aaron Sorkin and stars Nicole Kidman Javier Bardem, and Nina Arianda. So let me tell you a little about the plot. Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz are threatened by shocking personal accusations, a political smear, and cultural taboos in Academy Award-winning writer and director Aaron Sorkin's behind-the-scenes drama being the Ricardos. A revealing glimpse of the couple's complex romantic and professional relationship, the film takes audiences into the writer's room, onto the soundstage, and behind closed doors with Ball and Arnez during one critical production week of their groundbreaking sitcom, I Love Lucy. And that's the Rotten Tomatoes review. Our second streaming recommendation for this week is the PBS docu-series Connected, A Search for Unity. 
In this docu-series, Monty Moran travels to six communities to find people with unique and often unheard perspectives on life, culture, the environment, politics, and immigration. Connected looks at the world through a different lens and explores a vision for the country where a culture of empathy and understanding can flourish. Our third streaming recommendation for this week is the new film, The Hand of God, directed by Paolo Sertino and starring Filippo Scotti, Tony Servillo, and Teresa Spangello. You can stream this from Netflix. Paolo Sertino crafts a loving coming of age story from his own youthful memories in the new film, The Hand of God. Filippo Scotti plays Fabito, a young man on the verge of adulthood who lives in Naples with his family in 1984. He's obsessed with Argentinian footballer Diego Maradona. Well, actually, everyone is obsessed with Maradona. And the rumor has it that the legendary player is going to join the Naples football team. And by the way, if you're not familiar with it, football in Europe is what we call soccer over here. The hand of God follows Fabito through ecstasy, drama, and tragedy that comes with growing up in a world full of joy and pain and often surprise. And Sorrentino's trademark sense of the absurd and life's painful beauty shine right through. And that's the Vox Review. And finally, our Hoopla recommendation for this week. This week, I'm going to recommend an audiobook. It's a prime seasonal title. It's called Apple Cider Slaying. It's a mystery of the cozy variety, written by Julie Ann Lindsay and read by Amy Bentley. One Rotten Apple Blossom Valley, West Virginia. Try saying that 10 times fast, but I digress. One Rotten Apple Blossom Valley, West Virginia, is home to Smythe Orchards. Winnie and her granny's beloved 25-acre farm and family business. But anyway, you slice it, it's struggling. That's why they're trying to drum up business with their first annual Christmas at the Orchard, a good old-fashioned holiday festival with enough delicious draw to satisfy apple-picking locals and cider-loving tourists alike, until the whole endeavor takes a sour turn when the body of Nadine Cooper, Granny's long-time grudge-holding nemesis is found lodged in the apple press. Now with Granny, the number one suspect, Winnie is hard-pressed to prove her innocence before the real killer delivers another murder. If you like apples and cozy mysteries, check out Apple Cider Slaying. Library Connections videos premiere on Facebook Fridays at 1 p.m. and may also be found on the Southeast Steven County Library's YouTube channel. Have questions about this weekly video cast? Let me know. Send an email to me at rymorell at stls.org and I'll get back to you. And a note on library hours. The library is open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we're closed on Sundays. And on another hours note, the library has some holiday closings to alert you to. The library will be closed from Friday, December 24th through Monday, December 27th in observance of Christmas. The library will reopen at our normal weekday time of 9 a.m. on Tuesday, December 28th. The library's website is found at ssclibrary.org 
And you can find a whole host of information on our website about upcoming events. You can access our catalogs, schedule a curbside appointment, and much more. Again, that's ssclibrary.org. StarCat and its companion app, BookMine. StarCat is the catalog of physical library materials available to all cardholders of the public libraries in the Southern Tier Library system. STLS encompasses the public libraries in Steuben, Chemung, Yates, Schuyler, and Allegheny counties. StarCat is found online at starcat.stls.org. And the companion app BookMine, which is B-O-O-K-M-Y-N-E, -E, is available in your app store. If you'd rather access the catalog through the app, download it from your app store. The Digital Catalog and its companion app Libby. The Digital Catalog is available online at stls.overdrive.com. The Digital Catalog features eBooks, downloadable audiobooks, and a handful of streaming videos. And if you would rather access the Digital Catalog and its content through an app, the app is called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. You can download it from your app store and access the same catalog of items through the app. Hoopla, and of course its companion app also called Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features eBooks, comic books, full-length albums, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available for instant checkout for Southeast Bend County Library cardholders with a maximum of six checkouts per month. The Hoopla catalog is available online at hoopladigital.com or you can download the app to your mobile device or smart TV. Communicating with the library. An important thing, if you have questions about library materials or services, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607-936-3713. We have the same phone number we've had for decades, so if you have an old phone book floating around the house, you'll find our number in your phone book too. And you can also connect with the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Library blogs, we have five of them. We have the Book Club for Adults blog, which is found at ssclbook.club. And you guessed it, that one focuses on the monthly adult book club. We have the Corning NY History blog, which is our local history blog which is found at CorningNYHistory.com, Creation Stationery, our Makerspace blog, found at CreationStationery.com, Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, found at StoryMusing.blogspot.com, and Tech and Book Talk, a readers, viewers, and listeners advisory which is found at ssctech.com. And here briefly are our references for this week. And here briefly are our references for this week. And here briefly are our references for this week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great week.